Hi all, Karthik here from Design School by WP Algorithm. In this video, we'll take a look at five Elementor 3.0 tips, tricks, and things that you actually need to know while using Elementor's brand new design system. Now, I've been making quite some videos on Elementor's design system. Check out Elementor Basics playlist for more info on that. Even this video is a part of Elementor Basics, but let's get into it and let's see what are the th things which are essential and that you really need to know while using Elementor 3.x, x being any number. And the foremost thing that you need to know while using Elementor 3's design system is that you need to click on Elementor backend settings and you have to disable both default colors and default fonts. You have to check them both and click on save changes only then Elementor 3's design system is going to work, else it won't work. Now you may be confused that it will inherit things from your theme, but it's not true. Even if you change your theme, Elementor design system will remain the same, but you just need to check these boxes in order for the design system to work properly. So just check these boxes, click on save changes, and that's it, you're good to go. Then you can open up any Elementor page, post, or template, click on the hamburger menu, Click on site settings and put your default colors and default fonts. That's tip number one. Is why do you even need global fonts when there's something called typography? Well, if you look closely, typography essentially sets the properties of body text. So it's basically any normal text like text editor widget and stuff like that. And also the headings and their colors and font families, font sizes and so on. We've discussed this, you can check out Elementor Basics to learn more about global typography and stuff like that. But then there's something called global fonts. You have typography and then global fonts. Why would you even need global fonts when you have typography? Well, the answer is simple. Not all headings or not all widgets are part of the HTML tags for global typography, right? So let's say you're editing an icon box widget. Let's say I just dragged in my icon box widget. Now, if I want to set the body text or the text of the description, I have to go to style. I have to click on the pencil icon usually and I have to set the font size, font family and stuff like that, right? But that's not the thing. The same thing with description. What if we can simply click on the globe icon and set the font size? Well, that's the reason why you define the global typography or the global fonts. So not just your headings and paragraphs, you're essentially maintaining the same properties by picking the global typography option. You, ju you just need to click on the text icon and click the font size and font family and whatever styles you want to apply, just select that. And this particular element, which is essentially icon box description will also get those properties. And the same is true for any widget, which don't have heading tags such as heading widget, right? That's tip number two. Tip number two is to set the same properties that you want consistently across all your widgets or all your site elements by defining global fonts in addition to typography, right? So if your widgets usually have body text, if your widgets have tags such as H2, you can simply pick or those will inherit the properties defined in typography but if your widgets don't have heading tags or paragraph tag, they have special divs or something such as icon box widget, such as sliders and stuff like that. Well, then in order to set consistent properties across your website, you just need the global font system, right? And that's the reason why you have to define both global fonts in addition to typography, and right? So typography will set the styles for all H2s, H1, H3, H6 and also body text, but global fonts will make sure that the same kind of properties are also available to all widgets that don't have these heading tags or paragraph tag. That's simple. Tip number three, right? We talked about M's, REMs and pixels in the previous video. You can check out Elementor Basics playlist. It's a part of that. Now, essentially what I said was when you're setting body text, right? So when you're setting a body text, in the typography of body, right? This becomes the value with which it is multiplied when you specify M's. 
So if I say my H2 is 3.052 rem, it's essentially a multiplication of the root element or the HTML element. But if I apply the same ratio to M, it becomes 3.052 times the value of the body text, right? Well, that's partially true, but the actual thing is that you can still overwrite these settings at individual level, right? You can still overwrite these settings at individual level. What do I mean by that? So let's say I'll just click on this section. I'll click on advanced and let's say I just set a font size for this whole section. So let's say I just change the font size to 30 pixels, right? So now when I specify or now when I override this headings value with M, I'll just click here, it's 3.052 M. It's essentially taking the value of the font size of this section, but not the global style. Don't be confused. If you don't override it at individual section, column or the widget level, M will essentially be a multiplication of the body text that you set in global style. But if you override it at section level or the individual column level or the widget itself, so if you set a different font size for that particular section, column or a widget, M will be multiplication of that value instead of the font size that you set for the body text in the site settings, right? And that's the reason why I didn't mention this in the M's versus Rem's versus pixel video because it will be confusing, but hopefully I made it clear. Just override values at individual levels and try to use M's. You'll understand which value M is a factor of. So when you override, M will be overridden by the newly define font size for that particular section column or widget. So this is tip number three. Number four is to set the site logo and site favicon using the global settings itself. So click on the hamburger menu in on any page, click on site settings, click on site identity and just choose your logo from here. Now it's supposed to be independent of your theme, but I think it's still a bug, right? So let's drag in logo widget right in elementor you have a site logo widget especially if you have elementor pro you'll have this widget so if i drag it above it will get the logo defined in the theme styles right so i just refresh the page and just like that it gets the logo defined in the theme style settings or in the site identity settings right now, if you change your theme, this is still going to change, but you don't have to go to your themes interface, your customizer area of your theme and add your logo. It's supposed to be independent of your theme, but for some reason, it's still not. The favicon, however, remains. I think it's a bug, right? I'll show you what I'm talking about. So now the current theme is Astra. Now, if I activate Hello Theme on this site, and if I refresh this, this is a site logo and the value is dynamically obtained from the current theme, essentially the global settings. But if I switch the theme and update the page, it's still not going to get that value. So I have to click on site settings again and I have to click on site identity and choose the image right again. This is kind of a bummer. I think it's a bug, but if they rectify this, this should have been independent of the theme, but remember that you can set site logo and site favicon. However, the site favicon is still the same. For some reason, the site logo changes whenever you change the theme. But if you switch back to the actual theme, you get your site logo back. You don't have to upload it again or set it again. It's just like applying the site logo and favicon using your theme except that you're doing it in Elementor interface. Just like that, I switched it back to Astra and I get my logo that I defined. Of course, I can change the value by clicking on custom by specifying a size for my logo, 60 by 60. And just like that, the logo is obtained. So this is tip number four. And the foremost thing, let's say you just want to disable the whole design system itself. How do you do it? Well, it's quite simple. You just click on the settings cog at the bottom left corner of your page, click on style and actually you have to click the 
hamburger menu, click on site settings and then click on the settings cog, right? You now see there's something called general settings. You have a title for it. You can change the title and there is a status for this. So if you change it to disabled, right click and click on save draft, you've just disabled your theme styles or the global system. Now, without clicking on update, you have to refresh the page. If you click on update, the site kit or the theme system will be published again or the design system will be published again. Now, since we've disabled our default system, now all the properties are then derived from your theme. And those values that are actually overridden at individual level still remain the same, but you can see most of the values are then overridden. Now let's enable our site kit or the theme design system again. Click on the menu, click on site settings, and you now have a publish button. Let's click on publish and let's reload. Now you get all your site kit settings back. So that's a way to disable things in case you really don't want to use Elementor's design system, right? Now you get all the styles defined in your design system, right? Under site settings. So that's it for now. If you didn't understand how to set global colors or global fonts, check out Elementor Basics playlist. I made it pretty clear how to do that, right? And also typography. Buttons, images, and form fields are quite simple, right? You also use the global colors and global fonts in the form fields. And maybe for images, you can have an outline with any of your accent colors or something like that. That's it for now. Hopefully, this video helped you in understanding Elementor 3 and the way in which it works. If it did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, peace.